There we go. Sally, how are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Nice office. I like all the wood. Thanks. That's my house. I have uh, paneling all through the house. It's really, really nice. <laughs> it makes you feel like you're at work because it's kind of on the job ish. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know. I, I think this is just a radio show, so I wasn't sure if I needed to have my uniform on or not, but I decided to throw it on just in case. Sometimes I will, if the guests say that it's okay, sometimes I'll use the video from the Zoom and I put it up on our YouTube channel okay. so that people can then watch our conversation after the fact. And it gives them a little bit of insight into what we talk about before we go on the air and what we talk about during the breaks. And it's kind of okay. like a behind the scenes look. So. Since you're wearing your uniform, we'll use today's video footage. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there we go. Now you can see it better. <laughs> and I assume Gina or Edie are going to join us, right? Or was this just you and I? I don't know. Actually, Gina didn't tell me, so I'm not quite sure. So is this live or is this recorded no. and you put yeah. it up later? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's recorded. It'll air tomorrow a few minutes after noon. Okay. So how have you been? No, I see you have a cute backdrop now. I don't remember that the last time we were there. <laughs> well, I'm actually at home. I'm not at the station either. Oh, I see. Oh, that's so yeah. cute. Yeah. So we, uh, when all of this started, Andrew kind of, when, when the shutdown happened, he started limiting the number of people in our building to no more than two at a time. And... I had a lot of guests that didn't, you know, they didn't want to leave their house. They didn't want to, they were quarantining or that sort of thing. So when I realized that I could do the show over Zoom from my house or theirs, mm -hmm. probably 95% of the shows I've now done this way, there's maybe three or four shows a month that I've done live. And typically they're the ones that are locals. Uh, Nikki from the Front Royal Chamber, Doug Stanley from Warren County Administrator, they, they're they there. So, and they're going to work. But yeah, sure. for the most part, I've been doing them right here from my kitchen. <laughs> uh, it's like me. I've been doing all my interviews right here for the media. It's been great. You know, yeah, I, I, I look forward to get, getting back up into the park. I enjoy meeting a, a, a reporter out on the trail or out somewhere in the park. But, you know, right now, it's just not a good time. <clears throat> so, and those are some, are there specific things that you want to make sure we talk about today? Are there certain things that you have on your list that you want to make sure we discuss? Yeah, I'd like to make sure we discuss what we're calling Recreate Responsibly. Okay. And I'll, I'll go into what that means and, and how people can be careful when they're out in, on the trail doing things in the park. All mm. right. Because a lot of my questions were simple about, um, you know, explain to me what happened during all the different phases. What did you guys, did you completely shut down? How does that work shutting down Skyline Drive? That yeah. kind of stuff. Um, what does phase three mean for you in the park? I want to make sure that we touch on the fact that even though the park was closed in some cases to the public, that that didn't mean you guys weren't working. Maintenance right. still needed to be done. Things were still going yeah. on behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. um, what's coming up with this holiday weekend? How is that going to look? And maybe that's where we talk a little bit about best practices and mm -hmm. the recreate responsibly. Weddings, are you back to doing weddings in the park now too? Well, um, that's a good question. I think if they're small and follow the guidelines, they're, they're able to do it, but no big 200 and, you know, 300 <laughs> people weddings. Those take place in the amphitheaters and, and we're just following the Virginia guidelines. So that, that's actually a really good question. I didn't, I'm not the one that does the special use permits for weddings. Um, so I just should have asked our, our person that does that. I didn't. Well, I know, um, I know Helen Morton with Delaware North. She and I are on the Shenandoah Valley Travel Association board together, yeah. and she was talking during our meeting a few weeks ago. We've been having our phone, our board meetings over the phone, that they are getting busy booking weddings in the park. Okay. At, I guess at Sky Meadow or Big Meadow or Amazing. all of the different places, and that they've been very careful about making sure people understand. Then we were only in phase two, so it had to be fifty yeah. people or less. Now yeah. that you know, I guess Wednesday it'll be opened up. What is it up to 250 people now i believe yeah and and that would be what we could fit in our visit in our amphitheaters 
It's just a really good question. I think a lot of weddings have been put on hold just because of people not wanting to travel. So, but, you know, I just haven't, I don't know whether any have been happening. I know they can't be more than 50 people if they have been happening. Well, I'm just going to take asking you about weddings off the list. See how yeah, easy that works. <laughs> <laughs> I guess next time send me a, a, like the week before a list of questions and then I can try to find out those kinds of answers. Well, it is five after and I don't see Gina or Edie in the waiting room. So I'm going to go on the assumption that it's just you and me today. How about that? <laughs> that sounds fine to me. So Sally, when I introduce you, what is your title? How do you want me to introduce you? Uh, my title is Management Specialist. With Shenandoah National Park? Yep. Okay. All right. Well, typically what we'll do is we'll record two segments. They're about 10, 12 minutes long. And uh, we take a break in between to see what do we want to talk about in the second segment. But I'll just go ahead and kick it off and we'll see if we can knock the first 10 or 12 minutes off out and see what we can do. Does that work? Sounds good. All right. Hello and welcome to the Valley today. I am your host, Janet Michael. As you are listening to the show today, it is Tourism Tuesday in real life, as they say, but in my real life in the moment, it is Monday morning. We are recording today's show. Sally Herbert is with me. She is a management specialist at Shenandoah National Park. We're sharing a Zoom screen together. Sally, I'm really excited because I know that the park has been open through some of the phases that's got to be a great thing for you guys that people are finally able to get out and about and come and enjoy Shenandoah National Park oh yeah we're really happy to be back open again it was uh, we went through a slow closure process and then now we're in a slow reopening process and so it's just been um, slow but sure but now we're getting um, lots of people in the park and happy to be well on the way to back open fully again eventually so what was that like from the park perspective? I mean, I've talked to a lot of small business owners and just, you know, friends and family that kind of went through the shutdown and the different phases of their life as the state went through the different phases. But I would imagine having to shut down and then reopen a park is a whole lot more complicated than shutting down a coffee shop and reopening it again. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, remember, we're 100 miles long, so it's a lot of distance between everything in the park, and so it was a lot of work to get it shut down, but we did it incrementally uh, based on the recommendations of the CDC and the, and the public health officials and our local counties around the park. We were in um, cont continual communication with them. So it really started off with the closure of our two most popular trailheads in Madison County, which are the Old Rag Trail and the White Oak Canyon Trail. Those were the first two trails that we just had to close down. And, and it started after they, um, the Department of Interior suspended fee collection for, um, to, for the reason that they really actually wanted people to come out and enjoy the parks. Um, and, but then to protect our fee collectors, we suspended fee collections and that just opened up the door for a lot of people to come because stay at home was happening at the time and this was a chance for people to get outside. We just became inundated at that north end of the park uh, because we're so close to the northern Virginia, Baltimore, Fredericksburg area that that east side on the north end of the park really got inundated to the point where people were just overflowing the parking lots and if you've been out to Old Rag Parking or White Oak Canyon Parking they're on very narrow country roads people were parking at the shoulder of those roads and blocking traffic. And so we finally had to just shut those trails down and um, ask people not to go out there. So that was the first step of our um, limiting access to the park. And then the next thing was um, closing the boundary trailheads because we have over 60 boundary trailheads around the park. And once again, more people than normal were flocking to those trailheads very small parking areas, very small country roads, and they were making an impact on, on the homeowners in those areas. And the gateway communities were also being worried about people coming in from all over and maybe bringing the virus to their little, their towns. So we closed off those boundary trailheads. And then we began to close Skyline Drive incrementally. We started off by closing um, the north and central districts to vehicles. 
And we thought, well, maybe we can just let people come on and recreate on that, those parts of the drive by hiking and biking, and, and maybe that would slow down the numbers of people coming. We kept the South District open for a while, but then we just found out that that put too much impact on the South end of the park. So it got to that point where by early April, we ended up closing the entire park. And when you say closing the park, I want to make sure people understand it was closed to the public. That didn't mean all of you and all of the rangers and the maintenance staff all just went home and decided they're going to watch Netflix for a couple of weeks. You just closed it to the public. You guys still had to go about most of your daily activities to maintain oh, yeah. the park. Yep. And what we did, uh, yeah, everybody was still working. Um, people were asked to telework. Uh, we had wanted to limit the number of people in our buildings at the headquarters and, and within the park. So I began teleworking at that time and, and was able to work right out of my house. Um, and so we had people coming in if they were able to or people staying home. Um, our, a lot of our maintenance activities continued. We still had to do the spring mowing and, you know, there's wastewater treatment plants to keep running. Uh, there's water treatment plants. There's um, all sorts of activities to keep this park running that had to continue. And they were able to continue. We kept our law enforcement out there because, you know, even though we, the park was closed, Skyline Drive, the backcountry to overnight camping, there's still people that either didn't know about it and were coming in anyway or you know, we're just defying the closure and came in. So we had to um, keep our law enforcement um, handy. And um, so, yeah, we kept busy. And oh, the other thing was our um, contractors were able to come in and continue to do work. We were, we're still were giving out special use permits to our power companies and, and other maintenance projects and um, rehabilitation projects going on. So there was still quite a few people going on to the drive every day. Uh, um, so but not quite business as usual. Well, and I imagine that that may have been a little bit helpful in a shutdown for your contractors and all the projects that were going on, because I know sometimes it's a little complicated when you have people that are everywhere enjoying the park and you've got some sort of construction or things like that going on. I'm sure it made it at least a little bit easier that they didn't have a lot of people around. They could maybe get those jobs and those projects done a lot faster. Yeah, especially some of them, one of them, was at the Dickey Ridge um, picnic grounds and um, they were putting in a new sewer system. So without people using the picnic ground, it was much, much easier. They are still finishing that up. They're not quite done, but um, you know, as soon as they are done, we'll be able to, to open that one back up again. So I know Skyline Drive, one of the access points is in Front Royal. I know Lorray has an access point. When you close it, I always thought of Skyline Drive first and foremost, obviously, as this beautiful drive that you get to go through the park, and it really is kind of a relaxing vacation getaway of sorts just in the drive. But the bottom line is, it's still a road. Do people use it as a point of access from one place to another, not necessarily because it's the park? You mean like to to drive from to work or something? Yeah, or just to get to where they're going. Does that make it more complicated when you need to close it down? Well, I suppose for them it would have been more complicated. They would have had to, to go out onto the, you know, 340 on one side or 522, 231 on the other side. Um, so, yeah, I'm sure that did impact some people. I, I would imagine, like, for people going to work, they probably don't choose Skyline Drive as much as they would the other highways just because our, our, our speed limit's 35. Oh, and that's so true. definitely slowed down by, by taking Skyline Drive. I would totally want to do that. If I, if I had to work in one of those places, that would be my woosah to get to work <laughs> or to get home. So maybe sometimes that's what they did on the way home to just unwind before they got back to the house. Yeah. <laughs> so I want to talk a little bit about... Uh, phase three, because as we're recording this on a Monday morning, obviously people are listening to it on Tuesday. On Wednesday, phase three takes effect. So can we take a quick commercial break and come back and talk about what phase three looks like for the park and sure. the upcoming holiday weekend and all that kind of stuff? Can we do that in the next segment? Sure, you bet. Mm -hmm. Awesome. 
Well, we're going to do all of that in just a couple of minutes. So hang in there. Sally and I are going to take a quick commercial break. Again, we are pre-recording today's conversation on Zoom on a Monday morning. You, of course, are listening to it on a Tuesday afternoon. We're also, since we're on Zoom, going to put the video up on our YouTube channel. So the link to that will also be on the podcast page. But we'll be back in just a couple of minutes to consent... Co- to continue this conversation with Sally from Shenandoah National Park. All right. All right, my dear. So we got through that. We got through that. Got through the maintenance work. Yeah, I would totally take, if I worked in Luray and lived in Front Royal, I swear I would take the drive <laughs> just to get to work. It's a beautiful, talk about a great commute. I mean, 35 yeah. miles an hour aside, it's a great commute. <laughs> yes, it is. And I think in the, all the years I've worked here, I did meet one guy who would co- go in at 33 and then come out down by Charlottesville. Not every day, but sometimes he had to go to work and he just chose that because he had time to get there. Yeah, and see, I hate traffic. So I I could not tell you the last time I was on 81 or 66. If there's an option, I will go 522 or Route 11 or anything other than the highway. So yeah, I would be that person. (laughs) So in the next segment, we'll talk about what phase three looks like. Um, Well, we'll talk about Mm -hmm. the reopening because we talked in the first segment about how you went about shutting down. So let's talk about how you started to open back up. And then what sure. phase three means, what's going on over the holiday weekend, and then we'll talk about best practices, social distancing, wearing a mask if you're going to be in groups of people, all of that sort of mm-hmm. thing. Does that work? Yeah, that sounds great. All right. Welcome back to the Valley today. I am your host, Janet Michael. As you are listening to the show today, it is Tourism Tuesday. However, Sally and I have pre-recorded our conversation on a Monday morning to talk about Shenandoah National Park. Sally Herbert is a management specialist with the park, and we talked in the first segment about the actual shutdown and the different phases and how the park as a whole had to kind of in phases shut down as COVID-19 progressed throughout the the Commonwealth. But Sally, I want to talk for a minute now about how you then began to reopen and what the different phases look like. I mean, how do you decide which trails and what opens under each of the phases? How complicated was that? Well, for every phase of the closure and for the reopening, we did a risk analysis. And so the risk analysis was a series of questions that we had to answer and rate each type of uh, activity to see how risky it was. And if it was too risky, we wouldn't do it. But if it, w- it meant that the risk was low or, or moderate, we were able to go ahead and, and reopen. So that's how it happened. We began to slowly reopen and increase access to the park by the first thing would be opening up Skyline Drive. And we did that for day use only. So you could get up there at five in the morning and stay until 10 o'clock at night, but then we, were, we closed the drive at night. So you still couldn't camp out night. We still didn't have any lodges open at night, but we were just opening access to the daytime. And you could do any of our trails, but you could not get to those trails from the boundary. We waited until we had the concurrence of our local counties before we opened those trailheads at the boundary. We wanted to make sure they were ready to have more people coming in through their counties to get to those trails. And so once we did have their concurrence, then we began to open up those boundary trailheads. When we entered phase two of reopening, that's when we opened to overnight use again. So then backcountry camping was as allowed. Uh, we, we opened up our campgrounds to a limited capacity because the Virginia Forward Guidelines said that we needed to keep 20 foot distance between campsites. So that some of our campgrounds had a little tighter um, distance than that. So we, some of our campgrounds are open at 50% and some of them are open up to 70% of their capacities. Um, And then we were able to begin, the Skyland Lodge opened and Lewis Mountain Cabins opened. Uh, This, this, just this past weekend, Big Meadows Lodge opened. So they have been on a a phased reopening as well. Um, And our waysides, which are our restaurants and gift stores uh, run by our park concessioner, Delaware North, um, they have reopened. 
the only thing is they're they're not doing any sit down dining right now it's all grab and go so a lot of things are going on just a little differently than normal do you have you noticed an an uptick in park traffic i mean i know this is a busy time of year for you guys normally you would be inundated with people anyway if we weren't in the middle of a pandemic are you seeing higher numbers now that you're able to because people have been cooped up for so long and they just want to get outside well, the numbers are, are good, but they're not higher than normal. We definitely have a lower numbers than normal. Um, but we'll see what happens. As the, they have been steadily increasing, so we'll see if they ever get back up to a normal, normal level of visitation. Well, this 4th of July weekend should be a real indicator because that's normally a very busy weekend for us. So we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Now, will there be fireworks at any of the locations in the park over the 4th of July holiday weekend? No, we, we don't allow fireworks in Shenandoah. Too much oh. of a fire danger. Yep, no, there's, there, we never do professional fireworks and we definitely don't allow people to do fireworks in the campground or the backcountry for sure. It's all very, very dangerous as far as fire is concerned. I wouldn't have thought about that, but you're exactly right. So because, I think sometimes that there's a misconception that if you're outside, then all of the rules that we're supposed to be following about COVID-19, keeping our distance, wearing a mask, don't apply because you're outside. But that's not necessarily the case. And you guys have a policy, you have like best practices, and one of them is recreate responsibly. Tell me about that. Well, this is a park service-wide initiative called Recreate Responsibly. And just reminding people that, sure, when you're out on a trail and there's nobody else around, you don't need to wear a mask. You're fine with your circle of friends that you're with or family. But it's when you get into busy areas, like at the trailhead parking areas, they can be very crowded at our popular trails. And so you will definitely want to have a mask on when you're getting in places where there's a lot of other people. A lot of our trails in Shenandoah are very narrow. Um, and so when you're walking down the trail, if you see people coming towards you from the other direction, you really should step off the trail and get six feet off the trail and then let those people go by and then go get back on the trail again. Um, but if you're on a trail that you can't step off six feet, then that's where you put your mask on until you get past them. And then once you're safe and clear, then you can take it back off again. But a lot of the other things in Shenandoah is our destinations, like the top of um, some of our viewpoints are very small, limited viewing areas. So when you get up to those viewpoints, be aware that you need to try to stay six feet away from the people around you. If you can't, you need to wear your mask. Um, or and the other thing about recreating responsibility is to take turns. So when you get to the top of a mountain, maybe years ago you might have spent two hours up there. Well, if there's a whole bunch of people waiting to come up to see that view, please just limit your time up there and then back down and let them have that opportunity to go up. And that makes sense because I think that's a big deal right now too, because there are limited numbers of people that are allowed to be in, you know, a close proximity like that. And I've been up and seen where, you know, it would be really nice to be able to get up closer. And sometimes you'll wiggle through a crowd to just snap that one picture that you want to take with your phone. That's not really the safest thing to be doing right now. So we really do, aside from wearing a mask to protect those around us, we also need to consider everybody else wanting to have a good experience and try and facilitate facilitate that as much as we can. Yeah, and so the other thing too is, is what, one thing we worry about is if somebody has a problem while they're in the park, if they have an injury out on a trail, you know, that's going to require our staff to come out and, and carry that person out, out of the woods and off the trail. So this might not be the best time to learn um, a, some sort of a high adventure skill. Uh, maybe if you've never rock climbed before, maybe you should wait to do that next year. Um, just just in case, unless you're with a you know a guide and, and you're in a class or something. But maybe not trying to do some of these adventurous things on your own in case you you get into an accident. Because really, some people can't help it. They they have a medical issue out on the trail. They they can't help that. But if it's something that you can then try to prevent, we would really appreciate people doing that. 
One of the things that we've been watching a lot of during um, our being at home time is one of my favorite TV shows are the different uh, wardens shows on Animal Planet like Lone Star Law and uh, Northwoods Law. And they are frequently going into their parks to rescue people who have gone out on a hiking trail and have taken on a trail that was beyond their ability or just randomly did twist an ankle or something happened and they've had to go and make the rescues and, and bring them back to the mainland to get medical attention. So I can imagine where that would get a little sketchy if you've got a lot of people doing that in this current situation. Yeah. So it's just, it, it puts our rangers at risk if, if they have to go rescue somebody that they possibly could have the virus and not know it. But then um, some people can't help it. They have a, a medical issue. They have to be carried out. But if you don't need to learn how to uh, do something adventurous right now, just put that off for the future. So right now, as we're having this conversation, you know, it's the end of June, the beginning of July. Is everything accessible right now at the park with some restrictions like the campgrounds being, you know, kind of socially distanced themselves? But is everything open right now? Well, not 100%. Like our visitor centers right now, they're open with our park store. Uh, our, our, our cooperating association, Shenandoah National Park Association, we're, we've allowed them to open up their store because their, their business completely relies on sales. And they felt like they could do it responsibly. They put up the plexiglass around their uh, cash register. And, um, but what isn't open is the exhibits and the auditorium right now. Uh, we don't have the staff to manage all that um, because of what, what the timing of this crisis was right when we were about to start hiring people and bringing them on board. And we ended up not being able to do that. So our staffing levels are really low as far as our in interpretation staff. So until we can bring on some more um, employees, we will not be opening um, Dickey Ridge Visitor Center, which is completely closed right now. Or, or the auditorium and exhibits in Bird Visitor Center until maybe um, the end of July or early August. We do hope to open them sometime this year, but it's just going to be a little while till we can bring on the staff. And if somebody is listening and they want to get more information, they want to learn more about the trails, because I know your website is phenomenal. It has so much information on it. It has maps. There are all kinds of things that people can find. Where is the best place for them to start if they're thinking about making a trip into Shenandoah National Park? Well, right on the very opening page of our website is a link that says maps. And so you can click on that map link and you can download and print out every single map that we offer at our visitor centers before you come. Um, there's even, if you dig a little deeper into the website, there's suggested hikes um, for easy, moderate, uh, more advanced. Uh, you can go to our Shenandoah National Park Association's website and you can buy some of the guidebooks ahead of time. We have wonderful, very inexpensive guidebooks that talk about uh, hikes to waterfalls, hikes to peaks and vistas, um, short hikes on the Appalachian Trail or short little circuit hikes in the park. Um, and so those are invaluable because they, they give you the information you need to find the trail and where you need to go on the trail. You don't need to go, come to the visitor center to get those questions answered. We also have a park app. It's an app that you can download on your phone and it's full of um, all sorts of resources that you can um, use while you're in the park. You need to download it before you come to the park uh, because we don't always have good cell service in the park. So make sure you have it on your phone already uh, when you get here. And what is the name of the app? Is it just, do I just do a search for Shenandoah National Park? Yeah, just go on to the, um, the different stores where you can download things and it's just called the Shenandoah National Park app. Very simple name. And how do I access the website? What is the web address? It's www.nps.gov slash s-h-e-n see that's easy enough yeah <laughs> Well, we are going to wrap up today's conversation. We have been chatting with Sally Hurlbert. She is the management specialist at Shenandoah National Park. The park is open for the most part. Sally, would you say probably 90% of the park is open and accessible? Yeah, all the trails are open. Um, one, bit, one picnic ground isn't open yet because it's still under construction. It should be opening pretty soon. Um, Big Meadows Lodge just opened. Um, so, you know, things are definitely, I'd say, at least 90% open. I think uh, Loft Mountain Wayside may not be quite open yet. That's um, in the southern end of the park, but should be opening soon. 
Um, I guess one, one final point I wanted to say is that one, some of the places that we're getting a lot of visitation are our most popular trailheads, which is Old Rag, White Oak, and Dark Hollow Falls. So it is becoming very hard for people to maintain social distancing on those trails. So we're just asking that if you could pick a different trail for right now and come back to those later, that would be much, would be very helpful for all of us if, if we just sort of try to limit visitation on those high use trails. Or pick a different day. Don't necessarily decide the weekend is when you're going to do that. Maybe take a day off in the middle of the week and yeah, be exactly. able to do it on a different day. Yep, you'll, you'll really enjoy not having it be as busy if you come up on a weekday. Well, again, Sally mentioned all of the places that you'll be able to access more information, including the app. I will put all of those on the show notes page of the podcast for the Valley Today. It'll be up at theriver953.com on the Valley Today page. It's already there since we pre-recorded today's show, so you'll be able to go and access it. Sally, thank you so much for taking some time out of your Monday morning to have this conversation with me. I really do appreciate it. Well, thank you. I enjoy being able to let you know what's going on in the park. Tomorrow is the Valley Business Today. Normally, that would be a live show because Nikki Kales would come over from the Front Royal Warren County Chamber of Commerce, but we've had some unforeseen circumstances happen, so Nikki and I are going to record tomorrow's show via Zoom, but it will still air tomorrow a few minutes after noon, so meet me back here then, and I will have that show ready to go for you. All right, my dear. Yeah, my, my poor dear friend, Nikki, from the Front Royal Chamber had COVID exposure on Friday. Oh, no. Ooh. Yeah. Something that came in the visitor center, they think? Uh, well, she they came into the chamber. It was actually one of her board members um, had was, was going on vacation. So apparently she was leaving for vacation on Friday afternoon, and they were going to Maine. I think they would rent a cabin or something in Maine. They found out earlier in the week that they couldn't go to Maine unless they had a negative COVID test within 72 hours of them arriving in the state. Mm -hmm. So she had gone Monday and gotten a COVID test, and it was negative. She came by the chamber on Thursday to sign some checks for Nikki before they headed out on vacation and then woke up Friday morning with symptoms. Oh my gosh. And she went and got a second test and tested positive. And so Nikki kind of got caught in the crossfire there of oh. the exposure. Oh. And Nikki has two special needs children. So she, yeah. it was, it was, yeah. so now Nikki is on a 14 day quarantine and poor Katie can't go to Maine. <laughs> Oh, man. That, that's doing the right thing. That's the, yeah. definitely doing the right thing. I just realized I said something wrong. I said something. I, I didn't. I didn't look at my schedule. The Loft Mountain Wayside opened this weekend, so I said something. It's going to open up soon, but it already opened on Saturday. Well, and that's usually when I, and that's part of the reason why I always tell people that we've pre-recorded because yeah. that way they understand that something may have changed from the time mm -hmm. that we recorded the show versus the time that they're hearing it. But they'll see that if they go to the website. Sure. I guess the other thing that we aren't opening probably at all this year are our, our historic um, structures. We have, uh, we do tours of um, President Hoover's retreat, Rapidan Camp and Massanut Lodge. But those, you know, like we said, 90% things percent of things are open. So I don't know if we have to call those out. Well, and I think so many people just want to get out. I mean, they just want to be on the trails. They want to come to the picnic areas. They just want to be in the outdoors more so even than, than any of the, the tours, yeah. attractions, so to speak. <laughs> All right, my dear. Well, thank you so much. This will air, like I said, tomorrow, a few minutes after noon. The uh, podcast recording will be up on the website. The video will be up on YouTube. And hopefully it gets you a controllable amount of people that come to the park. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it's actually, like I said, the numbers we think are a little lower right now. But they're still flocking to the popular trails. So we're hoping they can spread out a little bit. <laughs> oh, yeah, and make it a little bit easier. Well, and whenever you have a situation where it is getting, you know, kind of busy or crazy, send over a press release, send over some sort of press release, and we'll throw it up on the air as a public service announcement that said, hey, keep in mind when you're out on the trails at Shenandoah National Park, keep blah, 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 blah. If you want to write something up and send it over, we can include that in public service announcements and things like that. No, good idea. Yeah, yep. yeah I don't tend to do that, but I could. That's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my dear. Well, enjoy the rest of your week. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. You too. Bye.